In today's video, we're gonna learn how to write simpler and better closures in Swift. Before we jump into things, drop a like down below. It really helps out more than I can even express. Subscribe if you're into iOS. Let's open up Xcode and let's jump right in. We're gonna work in a playground to demonstrate how to write these supposed simpler closures. I'll create a blank playground here and let's call it creatively better closures and I'll toss it onto my desktop. So before we jump in, let me just uh, expand our window here and I'll paste in some starter code such I don't have to bore you guys. So essentially what I've got here is I've got a struct company. A company has a name, whether or not it is publicly traded, and then a stock price, which realistically should be optional, but I just simplified it. Respectively, we have a collection, an array of companies down here, and I'll actually make it explicit. And we've just filled out five instances of the above defined struct. So let's create a function down here and we'll call this, let's call this demo. And maybe down here we'll invoke this to get this to run. And let's say we wanna use some closure to do some stuff with this array. So let's write a basic closure and then we'll talk about how we can improve it and what is better about what we are going to look at today. So we're gonna say these are going to be public companies and this will be our companies and I'll say go ahead and filter and we wanna make sure that this is company in and what I'll do is company is public is what I'm looking for. Thereafter, I will compact map this and this once again will be company in. And we can say this will be company.name and finally, I want to print this out. So here I will print out public companies. So pretty simple, we've chained these two closures together for filter and compact map. These are the built-in uh, functional closures that Swift standard library uh, does offer, but you can use, of course, any of your own closures as well. But let's actually give this a run and let's make sure this works. All right, so these are pretty simple. We get Apple, Facebook, and Google out indeed publicly traded companies, let's make these closures better. So the way we're gonna make these better, and when I say better here, what I mean is more shorthand and a little easier to interpret if I don't say so myself, well, we're gonna leverage key paths to do so. So a key path actually gives you a lot of functionality in Swift, and for those of you who have used them before, you might know that you can observe values for key paths with uh, KVO, key value observance. There's a variety of other key path-based functionality you can do, but one thing that's lesser known is you can use them in closures as well. So here, we're gonna take what I've highlighted, and what I'll do is I'll say filter uh, this backslash, or forward slash, I should say, um, and I was confused those two slashes. And then if I hit the dot, you'll see the properties that we have available to us. So I'm gonna use is public, which is what we were using before. This resolves a Boolean. This in fact is a Boolean from up above. So I'm able to do that. And now this compact map thing is a little ugly too. So let's, let's do one better with this. What I'll do is I'll change this to be a map. And we're gonna say we wanna map this to the name or we can map it to stock price, or we can map it to really anything, but once again, we'll just do name to stick with the same functionality. And I'll clear our console, stop, and give it a run once more, and you'll see we get the exact same output. But we did clean up like six lines of our code. So what you can imagine is when you start to use more complex closures, what you are able to do is use a key path to uh, A, dramatically reduce the amount of code you're writing, but B, make things a little more readable. And one pro tip that I'll mention here is we're just using these constant uh, stored properties from our struct. What you can also do is you can create derived functionality. So what I mean by that is, let's say you have a closure that does a bunch of logic and based on that, it returns something. So here, what I'll do is I'll say var, um, maybe we're saving these in a database, right? So we'll say should save, which will return a Boolean. So I'm gonna say, okay, if is public, we are going to return false. Uh, else, what we'll do is, I guess we don't even need the else. Here what we can do is, okay, if, let's say we have two not public companies, fake and fake two, and here we can say if, if it's fake, uh, and the stock price is greater than 1,000, return true, otherwise return false, right? So we have some logic in here. Admittedly, it is a little simple, 
but this will hopefully explain my example, you can have some complex logic and now instead of having a closure where you have all this jazz inside of there, what I'll be able to do now is say, hey, just give me uh, the company that should be saved in our database, right? Taking our pretty simple example. Once again, I'll pause and give it a run and we'll see fake two is the only one that meets the criteria of this computed property. So I digress, using key paths for closures is actually really nice. It helps you obfuscate your logic, keep your code a lot simpler and cleaner. And I don't know if it's just me, but this kind of just looks cooler. Not that that's a good reason, but uh, I figured I'd share it anyway. So that is all I've got for you guys today. Uh, drop a like before clicking away on this video. Subscribe if you're new on our way to 90,000 subs as quick as possible. If you're into iOS, feel free to connect on LinkedIn, follow on Twitter and all the socials. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.